but you are going to learn a lot. You're going to have a lot of fun, but I don't show that to you. What's up and welcome back to my channel. My name is Angie and I make videos about my life and struggles here in South Korea as an international student. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I make videos every Wednesday and Sunday. Today I wanted to show you guys how I make my apple pie crepe cake. I don't have a lot of the equipment that I normally have, but I'm going to do my best. And the description down below has the actual measurements as well as the step-by-step. -step. Disclaimer, I am not a professional baker or anything like that. I just like to make desserts. So if you guys are confused on anything, just let me know and I'll try my best to clear it up. I hope you guys enjoy the recipe and let me know how you guys go with it. Eventually. Today's topic is kind of something I've wanted to talk to you guys about for a very long time. Recently, in the last two months, you guys know that my mental health took a massive, massive dip just because of all the stuff that's been going on. I kind of just wanted to talk to you guys about the mentality and mindset that you kind of want to have when you go travel abroad to study. As most of you guys know, I was studying in Australia for a while and I decided that I didn't want to study there anymore. And, you know, I looked around, I worked, I did a lot of things and none of it really made me feel like completely satisfied with everything. So then I decided to take up an offer to come here. Taking that offer was, it was exhilarating. Well, I was the eldest child of a Chinese immigrated family, like any Asian can kind of understand that you don't get much of a choice as a kid and like as much as my parents did give me choices there wasn't a whole lot of it at the same time I got pretty frustrating but since you don't find who you are and you know what you want to do for a very long time for a long time I just listened to my parents like my mom still wants me to go home she wants me to just like study like mediocre stuff in Australia she literally just wants me to get an arts degree in Australia get a random job and then she's good you know I kind of rebelled and I moved to here to study something that I've wanted to study for so long there's still that fight going on at home but she's a little a bit more chill now like with that being said that means she doesn't want to support me financially which is chill that's why i got a job i wouldn't have to like rely on her in that sense finding a job when you're overseas in a country where a you can't speak the language b there's a global pandemic going on it is tiring and it brings your mood down even more like you become even more depressed over time Basically, when I got here, I had the most like most happy-go-lucky kind of vibe going. I was, you know, ready to have fun. I was ready to live the life that I, you know, didn't get to do back at home. Within three months, that fantasy went out the window. Like that shattered. Not all sunshine and rainbows, like a lot of people paint it to be. If you are in this part where you have to work and stuff, it's really not sunshine and rainbows. But you are going to learn a lot. You're going to have a lot of fun. With that being said, I think one of the biggest things people don't talk about when studying abroad is the fact that you don't get FOMO, you get a different kind of FOMO. When you say, oh, I miss my friends and family and stuff, they think like you just miss going out with them and stuff like, yes, I do miss going out with them. But at the same time, I really, really, really get anxious when something happens at home and I'm not there to kind of be there for the people that need me to be there for. If that makes sense, like recently we had a very close family friend pass away and then I had some friends of mine with some health issues and then I had health scares with my dad and there was my brother who got in a car accident and that all happened in like a month. And literally Really, like most of those actually happened in the same week and it was terrifying and it was like debilitating it was crippling it was just horrible when things like that happen at home and you can't go home to be there and to help in any kind of sense like it is really stressful and especially for like the fact that like I'm so used to being the one that is there to help out like it just feels horrible 
I've had to kind of learn to deal with the fact that I'm no longer at home and even if I was to go home, I couldn't see anyone face to face for at least two weeks because, you know, quarantine. In the last couple of months, you guys have kind of seen like me transition into something else. Like my schedule is obviously very different now. The stuff I post is a lot more different. You know, before when you guys started watching my channel, a lot of you guys would have seen like, you know, just trips and just having fun and stuff. But now it's a little bit more serious, like what I can do to help you guys, but also like what you guys really, really, really need to know before you guys apply to study abroad. Because studying abroad is all fun and games until you're underprepared to be here. And when you're underprepared to be here, you. that's when it stresses you out and that's when you know you have a real time with that being said i'm going to be changing a little bit of the stuff that i'm going to be doing like at first i will admit on my channel i was trying to paint a picture where it was like i was having like fun and there was no worries and you know just as if i was in like teletubby land now it's like i can't do that to you guys and i can't do that to myself either we are changing a lot of stuff i hope like you guys can kind of see that there's a lot of different things coming out like, I'm not saying I lied to you guys or anything. It's just that, like, the thing is, creators, anyone that posts anything, they can change and manipulate what they want you to see. For example, you guys see, like, the relationship between me and Jin as something very interesting and very fun. But we broke up for a weekend, had fights, we've had arguments, we've had lots of things. But I don't show that to you. What the f is, is this house possessed? So basically, I'm just going to be showing you guys 100% authentic what's happening and stuff like that. I will warn you guys, there is a lot of me just complaining about random I do complain a lot. The thing is, a lot of people don't tell you the minor things that end up spiraling out of control. Like, I watched a lot of vlogs and stuff before I went abroad and I was like, okay, like, life looks fine. The country looks okay, there's some things to be expecting, some things will shock me and stuff like that. But there are a lot of things that you won't expect to surprise you. No one really talks about that. Especially for my peeps who have mental problems, like myself, we need to be extra careful because anything can trigger us into an episode or like go down a rabbit hole and stuff like that. And the thing is with rabbit holes, you don't know when you exit, you don't know if you're going to keep falling or if you're going to suddenly stop and just sit in the hole. You never know and that's the worst part. The main thing is knowing that you are going to have a couple of episodes. I legitimately didn't think I would have this many episodes of, you know, going down the rabbit hole. I think August and September were probably the worst two months. I was constantly finding myself stuck in bed, not being able to leave, not even having the energy to turn on my laptop to do my lectures properly. Like some days were better than others. Some days I had energy and I went out and did all these things, but a lot of the time I just didn't have energy. And like, I didn't want to talk to anyone. I pushed people away, like from home, from here, like anyone, I just didn't want to talk to anyone. And eventually like it got to a point where people were like, this is not okay. Like there is something wrong with you. You need to talk about it and then that's kind of the breaking point where a lot of things happen then i had to start talking about it it is scary that's the thing it is going to be very scary to talk about it but that's the only way to get better that's the only way to move forward you're going to make a lot of mistakes here you're going to make so many mistakes coming and going and doing whatever and it's part of life and if you're afraid of mistakes it's going to be a very anxious trip for you if you ever decide to actually study abroad for me i'm terrified of mistakes i have to be 100 percent perfect as much as i can be I I'm not perfect, but the thing is, in my head, I have to be because otherwise then I'm letting people down. And so because of that, I get into weird momentums, I guess. Like I start doing more of this thing for this person because I'm like, oh my God, like they're going to start thinking I'm unreliable and untrustworthy. They don't give a flying <laughs> They really don't give a about it but the thing is in my head i have to do it i just end up getting my priorities wrong but at the same time i don't really have a control over my anxiety i really don't as much as i try to it is quite hard to get that control the best way to gain that control is have people help you like i said i say this now but at the time i was like no i don't need anyone's help so you really have to make sure you have a good support network but yeah, basically studying abroad is not sunshine and rainbows that everyone thinks. There are going to be a lot of very hard times. There are going to be a lot of times when you're frustrated because you're not from the country. You're not from that culture. You don't know very much. You've literally lived at home the whole life. 
for you to just suddenly uproot yourself and move, you know, to another country is extremely daunting. Especially when like you've been babied your, for your whole life basically after you graduate from high school. I'm not gonna lie, even though I've seen some horrors in this world as a kid, we're not gonna go into that, but all I'm saying is there is some I've seen as a kid and in a sense you're mature, but you're not mature enough to know how to deal with a lot of the things that get thrown at you in your early 20s. And the thing is no one really, rarely ever does. And that is why you guys need to be prepared, especially if you guys want to move overseas by yourself. Harder than a lot of people think. I was friends with a coach. I had friends here before I got here, but I still end up feeling so isolated. I ended up breaking down in front of my roommate and then we became like best friends and then she left me. Well, technically her exchange finished so she had to go home, but you know. Thing you just gotta remember is be truthful to yourself whether or not you are wanting to come overseas to study because you want to study in that country and it's what you've been wanting to do because I know a lot of people just want to study abroad because they have like the financial ability to do it but also they just want to be like for some people, studying abroad is something that is like a lifeline to them. I'm not saying it's a lifeline for me. I'm saying this is something that I needed to do for me to feel complete. A lot of people have been asking me like, are you planning to open your own place? Or are you planning to keep teaching and stuff? Thing is, I've been teaching since I was 14. I'm 22 right now. I've been teaching for eight years. As much as I do love teaching, it's not the career path that I want to go down for the rest of my life. For me, coming here to study is just a way for me to close a big chapter of my life. I've been practicing since I was nine and then competing and seeing the world stage and all of that stuff. I just didn't think that like me suddenly stopping training or anything like that was the right way for me to finish this. Coming here, studying and doing some more training whilst my body still can let me train, that that is the best way to finish it off. That is my reason to come here. Have a think about it to why you want to come overseas and study. Because if you don't know, then that's when it's going to get harder for you to find reasons to stay and motivate yourself being overseas you need like a ton more of motivation than you do when you're studying at home it's safer to study in your own country in that sense you guys will meet my friend samuel in the next upload talks about how his course is actually taught in english yeah like you guys will see how that goes but also i just really really want you guys to understand that like i'm not neglecting you guys either and i'm not trying to falsify or cover anything up it's just that there's a lot of things going on my brain can only take so much because i am because like i am extremely messed up so messed up take it from your fellow child online yes i am a child if you aren't ready don't do it because you'll be stuck in like a and the thing is, I wasn't ready, so now I'm not stuck in a hell, but I'm not doing the best. And it's just gonna ruin your mental health a lot. Please, please, please think it through before you come and before you make that decision. You really need to be, in a sense, sure. That is the biggest and best advice I'm going to tell you. Be sure, be prepared. So I hope that kind of covers a little bit. I've suddenly had a massive change in maybe character, if you guys see that. I don't know, some people have been telling me that I feel very different and I'm like, really? I don't know. But anywho, I just hope that gives you guys a bit more insight on the effects of studying abroad on mental health, especially when you're underprepared. Thing is, I don't need medication for my mental health, but at the same time, I get triggered very easily. When this happens, you need to be very careful with yourself. So I know that there are people whose mental health issues are a lot worse than mine. You have to be careful with the decision to study abroad if that's the case. I kind of should have listened a little bit more to my therapist to maybe wait a little bit before I came but at the same time I'm a very impulsive and impatient person so I hope that helps someone at least to understand you know that studying abroad is not sunshine and rainbows and it's it's not really for everyone. You have to be very careful you really do. There's a lot of stuff that you have to step up to do that you're not normally used to doing. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, please let me know. You guys know where to contact me. All the links are in the description. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you guys didn't, let me know anyway so I can, you know, make better videos for you guys. If you guys want to stay in loop for my videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll be uploading on Wednesday since, you know, it is Corona at the moment and we're all stuck inside our houses so we've got time to edit. So this video will be about my friend Samuel who we're doing a Q&A with. So I brought in another other international students to talk about you know stuff and then if you guys want to jump in on questions polls and whatever's please check out my tiktok and instagram all the links are in the description below and other than that i don't really have much else to say i just hope you guys have a wonderful day night week and until i see you guys next time don't forget to smile bye